Welcome everybody to this final installment on Chapter 9's coverage of all kinds of crazy crap. In this video, I'm going to teach you about bond order. The ordering of a bond. Okay, in the world of chemistry, there exists this thing called bond order, and sometimes you'll see it crop up on standardized exams, as well as the exams that I'm going to give you, the students who take this class from me in person. So what is a bond order? Well, a molecule's bond order is determined by using the following equation. Bond order equals one half times the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons. If you look at this equation, you'll notice that the more electrons you have in bonding molecular orbitals, the larger the bond order is. The more electrons you have in, appear in anti-bonding orbitals, the smaller your bond order is. Now, as I talked about in our earlier lecture, having more and more electrons in bonding orbitals generally means that your molecule is going to be more and more stable while plopping electrons into anti-bonding orbitals makes them less and less stable. With that said then, it should follow that the greater the bond order, the stronger and more stable, i.e. lower in energy, a bond is. A stronger and more stable bond is also a shorter length bond. A bond order of zero indicates that the molecule is too unstable to form and will not exist. And in fact, that's the bond order you get if you have the same number of electrons in your bonding molecular orbital as you have in your anti-bonding molecular orbital. So that takes us to some example problems. Consider the H2 plus ion. Sketch the molecular orbital. I hate it when I belch while I'm filming. Okay, sketch the molecular orbitals of the ion and draw its energy level diagram. How many electrons are there in the H2 plus ion? What is the bond order of H2 plus? And then this question, according to molecular orbital theory, would either beryllium-2 or beryllium-2 plus be expected to exist? Why or why not? And this problem, what are the relationships between bond order, bond length, and bond energy? Now I'd like you to try and do these on your own if you'd like to pause the video now and attempt to do so. If you want, you're welcome to stay tuned while I answer each of these in turn on the board. This first question asks us to consider uh, the hypothetical molecule H2 plus. It then asks us to uh, sketch a molecular orbital energy diagram and draw, yeah. So here's what we're going to imagine. We've got two individual hydrogen atoms. and Each of them brings one electron to the table. And these electrons are housed inside their individual 1s orbitals. And it doesn't matter, honestly, if I draw them going up or down. We've got two individual. Uh, Electrons, these are their, uh, their atomic orbitals. When they get together to form a molecule of H2, I first of all have to draw a molecular orbital at the bottom, and that is its uh, bonding molecular orbital. And then I have to draw an anti a box up here that represents the anti-bonding molecular orbital. I then fill up the orbitals from the bottom up. I put my two electrons in there, and that would be a beautiful MO diagram of the molecule H2. In this case, though, we're not talking about H2. We're talking about H2 plus. What does that plus mean? Well, it means that I've removed one electron from the system. So I could imagine hypothetically removing this one. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And then I'll go ahead and put that one down there. That is an MO diagram of this hypothetical molecule H2 plus. The next question says, how many electrons are in the H2 plus ion? Well, obviously, the answer is one. The next question says, what is the bond order? Now, as I just discussed, bond order, which is abbreviated BO, <laughs> equals 1 half multiplied by the number of bonding electrons. So I'll write bonding electrons, BEs. My, oh, good grief. I didn't give myself enough room here. So I've got BO is going to be equal to 1 half multiplied by the number of bonding electrons subtracted from them the number of uh, anti-bonding electrons. So the Bs minus the Abes. In this case, um, I've got one half. The number of bonding electrons in this hypothetical molecule is one. The number of anti-bonding electrons occupying that box is zero. So the bond order is going to be equal to one half. This question asks us to consider the molecule Be2 using a molecular orbital theory. Would we expect Be2 to exist? Would we expect Be2 plus or beryllium 2 plus to exist? First of all, we have to draw the molecular orbital energy diagram. I'm going to start by drawing two separate atoms of beryllium, each bringing their separate s atomic orbitals to the table. I'm now going, as they come together, they're going to form two molecular orbitals. One is a bonding orbital down bottom. The other is uh, an anti-bonding orbital at top. Now I've got hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. Yeah, beryllium. 
uh, has each beryllium atom has two valence electrons. And you can tell that by looking and seeing that they're in column two of the periodic table. So when they come together to form their bonding and antibonding orbitals, I have to bring these now four electrons and put them into these individual orbitals like that. Would we expect beryllium two to exist? The answer is no because I've got the same number of electrons in the, in the bonding orbital as I've got in the antibonding orbital. So beryllium 2 plus, or sorry, beryllium 2 does not exist. It's total crap. Now, what about beryllium 2 plus? What does that plus mean? Well, it means that I've removed one electron for the system, or from the system. It doesn't matter which one I pick, so I'll just remove this electron and this electron. Now, would we expect this molecule to exist? So it turns out, Yes, we would. Because there are more electrons in the bonding molecular orbital than there are in the antibonding molecular orbital, this molecule can, in theory, exist, and in fact, actually does.